Today is ketchup canning day. I've been canning for days and days and days. I did 28 pints of carrots. I've done beans and jalapeno peppers and salsa and regular tomatoes, but I have an abundance of tomatoes. I weighed out 25 pounds of tomatoes because I had a few tops that were iffy. I had a friend gift me 15 pounds of these guys. They look pretty darn good. So I used to can kind of rebel. This is my made up recipe a long time ago. And I've since quit canning rebel. Now on this ball book, I looked it up and I confirmed it to this year's recipe from ball from USDA the current ball book, and they all have the same recipe. And you should check every year because recipes change. Like whole tomatoes this year, the canning time went up. Why? Because the different tomatoes being grown have less acidity in them and more sugar. So I've always canned tomatoes, and that was the first thing I looked up, and sure enough, the time had changed on that. And also, I remember years ago, there was the addition of lemon juice. My daughter has a sulfate allergy, and all bottled lemon juice, unless it's organic, has sulfates. So I have to go with citric acid. But anyhow, I'm making this ketchup, and it is from the USDA, and it is up to date for 2024. I cooked the vinegar in the season packet, so that is all ready to go. So I have a Victorio strainer, so I'm just cutting these in half because they're going to go through the strainer. So I'm not coring and peeling these because I do have the strainer which will peel, core, and spit out the seeds and everything else set up outside. So I'm just splitting these in half to get them cooked with the onions and I'm not adding all of the stuff I used to add. I'm going directly by an improved and tested recipe because I do not want to play Russian roulette with my family. And actually the last ketchup I made, I threw out because it was one of my own recipes that was not approved. And it was sad to do, no one got sick, but it doesn't matter. And yes, I grow heirloom tomatoes, which has a higher amount of acidity, but you can't take that risk. If the USDA has changed the cooking time or added an ingredient, they did so because they tested it and found it was no longer safe, and I want to be safe. So always review every year a recipe, even though you've canned it for 30 years, like I've done with the tomatoes, because the time changed this year. It went from, I wanted to show that this year, and I checked on the USDA site, the processing time has changed. It is now one hour and 25 minutes for quarts compared to last year, it was 45 minutes for a quart. And so I always check your books to make sure they're updated. This one here, some of the recipes are great. Some of them are the same. Some have been changed. I also go through USDA sites of, or not USDA, EDU sites of certain states because they have a high amount of quality testing. And you want a tested recipe because they test. They don't want anybody to get sick they're verifying their recipes that if you use their recipes from start to finish, you will not get sick with botulism or anything else unhealthy. And so if you go off of that recipe and you alter any ingredient, you put your life at risk. And I am not going to alter any ingredient. I'm going as is for ketchup in this recipe. This is what a pot of 24 pounds of tomatoes look like. And in my recipe, it calls for 24 pounds of tomatoes. I have had this before and only used 12 and three cups of onions. 
and this will cook down. Now, because I am using Victoral Strainer, I know how much scrap I'm getting. All that has been very well calculated so I don't end up messing with my pH. It does call for a teaspoon of cayenne. When you're using dried powders, they don't alter the recipe. So I go heaping and I may add more because we like things spicy. Now I'm going to cook this for 20 minutes. I've cooked my vinegar over here for 25 minutes. Well, it's been steeping for 25 minutes, brought to a boil. You know, it's 25 minutes, 30 minutes. It's all pretty much the same technique. You're not going to hurt it. Some thoughts on choosing your ketchup recipe. My old recipe had bell peppers in it. There is a USDA approved recipe called a blender ketchup that will take bell peppers, but I did not like the amount of sugar it called for. It called for something like nine cups of sugar and also called for nine cups of vinegar. And I didn't want that. So I'm just trying a very basic one and I can add some seasonings in the way of dry herbs if I want to add some more pep or adjust it without altering the pH and the acidity in it. Another note you want to make sure is when you're looking for vinegar, make sure you find vinegar that says 5% acidity because there is some vinegars out there now at 4% and you cannot use that. It has to be 5%. And so when you're looking for a ketchup recipe, look for something that fits you. The two recipes I have here are most current. One uses a Victorial strainer and one does not. It's the same ingredients. They just come about it differently. And I like this one because it only calls for one and a half cup sugar compared to nine cup sugar. A note on different recipes, some recipes have different techniques and the exact same amount of ingredients. This one's talking about removing the skins before. Some will roast it in the oven. Some will put it through a strainer all at the same time. So which technique you use is what's gonna fit you in your house. But remember to use a tested and approved recipe because they are done and tested with these approved amount that they have in there and do not deviate from it. Don't add, oh, I'm gonna just add a couple of peppers. There are recipes that call for peppers, but they also adjust the acidity in the vinegar. And so you want to make close attention to the recipe you choose. You do not alter it in any way because it's been tested safe with those amounts. And so I have gone through probably 10 different approved recipes and they all have different techniques, the exact same amount of stuff. Some boil it, some simmer it, some put it through the strainer, some roast it, some peel before, but they all have, the end result is the same with the same ingredients. So I chose what works for me in my home and I have a Victoral strainer. So I'm simmering the 24 pounds of tomatoes. They've been on the stove now for about an hour. My pan is big. I'm using the full 24 pounds. So it takes a while to simmer. I'm gonna simmer until they're soft. I test it with the potato masher. Then I'll put it through the strainer, Victoral strainer, which removes all the seeds and peels. And then I'm gonna add in the vinegar, sugar, and salt. Now with the salt, this calls for a quarter cup of salt. That's something I can lessen. That's not something that will adjust the acidity. Adding peppers would adjust the acidity. Adding garlic would. I believe you may be able to add some garlic in place of some of the chopped onions or add a dry garlic if you want it extra garlicky. I'm going to add probably more cayenne pepper to mine because we like it a little spicy. 
the tomatoes haven't come up to a simmer yet. I use this to kind of just test to see how soft they are because then I know when I can put them through the Victoro strainer. And I decided I'm not going to add the vinegar seasoning juice until I put it through the Victoria strainer. It's not going to adjust the acidity or pH in any way. It's just my process of putting it together. So I want to get these through and I don't want to waste um, the heat of the tomatoes by adding the vinegar and when this is ready I'll put this through the strainer and then I'll come back and put everything else back in and then cook it down. This is a Victoral strainer I've used for about 40 years. I cooked my tomatoes till they were soft. I let it cool off for half an hour. Again this is 24 pounds of tomatoes and three cups of onions and one teaspoon of cayenne pepper. I put the tomatoes in here. I turn that, it, the sauce will come out of the screen here and the waste will come out the end here. As I fill a bowl up, I put it into one of my other pans that I bring into the house. We'll clean this pot and then start heating the ketchup down from there. And that is my process. I'm just about done straining this. I've used this Victorio strainer for applesauce, tomato sauce, tomato juice. This is the waste and I'll often run this through again to just make sure it's very dry. And at the end when I take this off there is a lot of paste left on this. And so I make sure I have the bowl under there to get that paste off or the sauce. So I'm almost done. I've got this last little bit to do and then we're going to bring it all back in the house. I got this plus another cup from just the scraps. These are very dry now. There's nothing left in them. And then at the end I scrape off all this delicious sauce here. Whoops. Don't do that. And then I'll clean this. This take it all apart and then I oil it until the next time I use it and I use just a food grade mineral oil to keep the rust from coming it's coming through so this here is the thick stuff where the other stuff is more like a juice but it cooks down over here I can show you. Get that filled and the heavy stuff always sinks to the bottom of course. So I'll get this cleaned up and carry on inside. So when I take this out this is some of the waste also and it just it comes right out. I don't know if this is picking it up on the camera or not. I'll find that out later. And this is no longer hot. It was hot when I first started. But this is just part of the way. So this is the part that comes out the one end and then all the seed. This is the seed and the peeling and all the pulp and the fruit that we want to keep comes out through the screen. And I use this for applesauce, tomato sauce, so many things. So this here is the leftover from 24 pounds of tomatoes. And it's really pretty dry. There's not much left in that. So now, again, I'll bring it in. Some of the prep I do on my Victoral strainers. I take some food grade oil. I've used all kinds, but I like this mineral oil that I use on wood. And I just wipe it because you do get some rust on the screen. 
And so even just, I've cleaned it and washed it. I don't know if that's from the tomatoes or a little bit of rust I missed. But I get the inside and out on that. And the other thing that's been known to rust is the turning, I'm not sure what you call it, ratchet thing. So I will add a little oil on here. And it's all been washed, it's ready for next time. And that's what I do for my prep. Put the gasket back on and it's good to go when I use it again. And to my tomatoes, I'm gonna add the three cups of spice vinegar. And I'm gonna drain the spice packet a little more because I wanna get all the delicious spices out of that. In the past, I put that directly in with the tomato. It also calls for a cup and a half of sugar. And I'm gonna go with that. And I'm adding another half cup of cayenne pepper and a half cup of black pepper. It calls for a quarter cup of salt, but I'm gonna go just half of that and taste it. And just because I can and because I have it, I'm going to add a half teaspoon, a scant half teaspoon of onion powder and garlic powder. And this is not, this is optional. And this here is a safe ingredient. Again, scant half teaspoon because it is a dried seasoning, so it's not going to alter the pH. Now, if I were going to add fresh garlic, that alters everything, and I don't want to alter that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this up to boiling, and I'm going to reduce this by about half. I want to add about the salt. The salt is not needed for safe canning in this. It is needed for flavoring, and tomatoes are one of those things that you really bring out the flavor if you add a little bit of salt. So if you have a restricted diet of sodium, you can restrict it all together. I use maybe two or three tablespoons of salt. I have this much left over from a quarter cup and I will adjust accordingly. This has been cooking all day. Is it as thick as I'd like it to be? It's thick. It's not as thick as I'd like to be, but homemade stuff is always thinner because we don't put corn syrup in it. And the taste is divine. Now the jars over on here, when they're upside down, they're pre-washed. And these ones here have had boiling water in them. And I just bring a couple over at a time. And this will be the ketchup for the next two years because that's how often I make it. The first batch is out of the canner. I have another same amount in the canner, but I wanted to show you, even though it's not as thick as I would like, this here is the texture of it. And it tastes amazing. I'm very pleased with this ketchup. This is the ketchup I canned yesterday. They all turned out, they all sealed, they've all been washed and marked. They're ready for the pantry. This is the recipe I used from this book and I did check to make sure that it was current and up to date with today's standards from the USDA and other sources that have been approved. Typically I make ketchup every other year with the last of tomatoes but because our friend had given us, well, she didn't give it. We traded honey because we're honeybee farmers. We traded some honey for some romas. I made this a little earlier. I still have a boatload of our tomatoes left to do for something, probably salsa and sauce and so forth. But this was an all day project and I'm very, very pleased with how well the ketchup turned out. It tastes good, it's got a nice consistency, and I will make this again. I also cooked up a batch of barbecue sauce with the leftover cowboy candy brine. 
since there is no approved recipe, I'm freezing it. This is the recipe I used. It is not approved for canning. I doubled the batch. I am putting it in the freezer. A little refresher course on steam canners. What a lot of people don't realize is you need to know your altitude. This here says to can for 20 minutes, adjusting for altitude. My altitude is 1100, which means I need to add five more minutes to my processing time. Water bath or steam can. This is the steam canner I used. I let this sit for five minutes and I steamed canned it for 25 minutes. The recipe calls for 20 minutes, but because of my altitude, I have to add five minutes. You would do the same in a water bath canner as you would a steam canner. So make sure you adjust your canning times for the altitude that you live in.